Okay, Chavra, so let's begin the Siyat HaDashmaya, our weekly Parsha Shir on Chasidus, the inner dimension. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Emmer, and I thank you so much for joining me and for joining all of us who are going to be spending the next half hour together. Be'ez HaShem delving into the depths of the Parsha and of the Torah and of the messages that are hinted to for us to be able to take practical advice and guidance to our Vodas Hashem, even in Sukkim that appear to be somewhat removed from our experience, but we know that the Hasidic masters came to the world to teach us that every single letter and every single Nakuda and every single expression in the Torah, even if it appears to be removed from us, is something very practical, is something that has something to say to us in every single age and stage and generation, and has the ability to provide guidance and to lift us up and to encourage us on the path toward closeness with the master of the world. And so we begin this week, Parshas Emar, with the Dagamach and Ephraim, on the Pasuk, Eilah HaMitzvah, the following are the commandments, Asher Yasa Osama Adam, that man shall do, V'chai Bahem Ani Hashem, and he shall live with them, Ani Hashem. The Nefesh HaChaim, on this Pasuk, also on a similar Pasuk, when he tamtem bum, that we had a couple of parashiyas ago when we were talking about the laws of kashras, that if a person is eating things that are impure, that are tamme, the, the, the Torah says, when he tamtem bum, you shall become impure with them. And then and the Rav Shachayim explains that it does not necessarily say in the Pasuk that you will become Tame because of these things, but rather the word bum is used. The same thing over here, Bachai Bahen, Bahem, with them. It says that Abishachayim, it appears to be not just that a person will become either sanctified or a person will become a little bit less in terms of his kedushan, in terms of his holiness, when a person is involved in things that are impure, but rather bahem means that you enter into an atmosphere, to an energy of either holiness or chas otherwise, when a person is involved in varying actions along the journey of the human experience. And over here the Pasuk is telling us not only that a person should live with the mitzvahs, but the Nefesh Chaim points out that V'chai Bahem means that your chiyas, your life force, as we're going to see in the Dagal also, is, so to speak, drawing from an energy by which you are surrounded in that time of the mitzvah. It's not simply an act that a person wears tzitzis or a person puts on tefillin or a woman lights uh, Shabbos candles. It's not simply an act that we are doing external to ourselves, so to speak, in a chilek, so to speak, in a, in, a, in a portion of our peripheral vision that we're focused on an action that's taking place in a certain in a certain area right outside of our body, right, right opposite us in terms of where our hands are and what our hands are doing to accomplish the mitzvah. We are surrounded in that moment by what's called the Avir de Gan Eden, by a spirit of Gan Eden. We don't have the ability in a physical body, lowly creatures, to be able to perceive that spirit, to, to be able to perceive that heavenly energy that's surrounding us at that time. The Nefesh Chaim says that the soul sees it. And through faith, like, like uh, re, re, you know, um, the, the Emunah Sitecha says on that Pasuk, the Emunah Sitecha, that a person has to have faith in times, right? The more a person goes into a Yantiv and believes that the Yantiv has something to give him, believes that there's something happening in the Yantiv, so the person will be able to perceive those energies, even though he can't see them with his eyes, but a person will experience them if we have faith that that's happening. And so it can really change our experience of mitzvahs. If you imagine you put on tefillin and you remember at that time that I'm not simply wrapping these straps around my arm and fulfilling the commandment and I can check off that mitzvah on the checklist of my day daily mitzvahs, but rather in that moment, I'm, I'm lifted what the Hasidic masters would call a tefach lemala mina aretz. You know, I'm, I'm a hand's breadth higher than, 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 than the earth, than the aretz, than the ground, than the gashmias, than the physicality and the artsias and the corporeality. I'm lifted above it. I'm surrounded and enveloped with a avir de gan eden. And so that's already a, a level deeper in terms of how we translate this pasuk. Not only elaha mitzvahs, these are the commandments, asher yasa al-sama adam, that a person shall do them, v'chai bahem, and a person shall live with the mitzvahs, a person should embody these mitzvahs and the, deal, the ideals of the Torah throughout his daily life, but rather v'chai bahem, a Jew lives inside the mitzvah. So when a person approaches to do a mitzvah, it's, it's, it's like you have a, your hand on the doorknob of a house and you're entering into a whole new realm. You're entering into what's called avir de ganeidens, a mashu acher. You're out of the world, a tefach l'malam ana aretz. You're, you're, you're removed from the earthiness a little bit. You're surrounded and enveloped and, 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 and being embraced by what's called the avir de ganeidens, that spirit, that ruach, that atmosphere of paradise, mamish paradise in that moment, v'chai bahem, you enter into the mitzvah with all of you, with all of you. Something similar that the Baal Shem Tov used to say on the, on the Pasuk, boy el 
When HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Noah that it's time to come to the Teva, you and your family and all the animals that he had, that he had gathered, to come into the Teva. But the Baal Shem Tev said that the word Teva can mean a boat, like it meant on a literal level in that context. But also the word Teva can mean a word. And the Baal Shem Tev says that all of Yiddishkeit is founded upon words, words of Torah, words of tefillah. But the Baal Shem says it's not enough to just read the tefillah. So it's not ju- just enough to, to learn Torah. But bo ela teva. The Jew has to enter into the teva. The Jew has to walk into that place to realize that this is my house. So the Baal Shem Tev, says, the, 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 the Kedusha Slavi says on a similar pasuk, kinim tases ha teva. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Noah when he was building the ark to make compartments in the ark, separate rooms. But the word Cain can also mean, in addition to compartment, it can mean like a nest, like a house, right? Shiluach HaKain, Shiluach HaKan, right? We send the bird away from the nest. Kin and Tasas HaTeva, and the word Teva can mean, again, like we said, not only an ark, an actual physical boat, literally, but it could also mean a word, the words of Torah and the words of Tefillah. Says the Berdich of Arav, Kin and Tasas HaTeva. Make those words of Torah and Tefillah into your house. Enter into them with all of your being. Shut all of the distractions off, not to dance like, we, like, like the Chazal. See them like to say on both on Beidr Tzaitin from the Mechitza on both sides of the Mechitza, but be in it, be in it when you come in, and that means also on a simple level. And I'm talking to myself, absolutely, I'm not holding anywhere. I'm just, I'm ta- I'm, I'm not Chaz Vashon trying to give Musar. I'm talking to myself only to give myself strength and encouragement. You know that 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 practical steps can be taken, like shutting off my phone, for example. When I come to David, I could shut off my phone. I could remove it from the room. I could say that I'm now detaching myself from the Artsius and I'm Bo Elateva. I'm coming into the Teva, Kinim Tasas Teva. I'm making the Teva, the words of Torah and Tefillah, my home. And this is also a simple, a, a, a little bit of a deeper understanding of this passage. Before we see what the Dego says, is Elab Mitzvah Sasha Yaso Sama Adam, the Chai Bahem, live within the Mitzvahs. They have doors, they have entranceways. Harbib Sachemlo, right? A Balatahir Poschemlo, they open up for him. Messiah, so they help him. Poschemlo. And so I can walk into the mitzvahs. I can go ahead and realize by virtue of my faith that this is happening at that moment that I'm currently enveloped by the Rucha de Meshicham. I'm, I'm currently enveloped by the Avir de Gan Eden. I'm lifted up out of the world. I'm living in a different reality at that time. I'm completely detached from all of my worries and all of my fears and all of the difficulties of life. When I'm sitting by Shalosh Shudis, I'm in a different place. I'm in a different place. I'm, 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 I'm already standing outside the Heichel of Mashiach. I'm already enveloped in the time of La'asid Lavai, in the time of, of, of feeling and perceiving Umala Arts Dea, when the world is going to be filled with uh, 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 Hashem and filled with the knowledge of God like water covers the, uh, the seabed. So that's again. On one level, just a little step, so to speak, deeper than the surface to understand the Chai Bahem, that a Jew must live inside Yiddishkeit, not just on the outside engaging with it, but to walk into it. Okay, says the Degel, Yish Bezederch Amok V'yoresi Lefare. She says there's something very, very deep in this Pasuk, and he says, and he, 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 a lot of times throughout Dagam Achan Ephraim, the Tzaddik speaks about what he's going to be speaking about. Either he praises Hashem for having gifted him with a Chiddush many, many times, and other times he talks about the depth of what he means to say. It's very expressive in terms of talking about what he's talking about. But if you hear something like this, I, 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 in my very limited knowledge, I don't think that it's so common in the Sefer and certainly not in other Sefarim. Listen to what he says. Yesh v'zaderach amok. There's something very deep in this Pasuk. V'yoresi l'farish. And I am afraid to even speak it out. Ki libi mahases v'zeh. My heart is trembling with this ulay shagisi. Maybe I made a mistake. Baro echas v'shalom. In my vision. Maybe I made a mistake in seeing what I thought that I saw that HaKadosh Baruch Hu means to be communicating to us in this Pasuk. Fascinating thing. Chas v'shalom. ma'at, but he says, nonetheless, I feel that it's important. I feel that it's something that could provide Jews clarity and chizik and guidance, which is the whole point of this endeavor in the first place. And he says, if God will help me, not if God will help the reader that they'll understand, but if God will help me, so if God will help me understand what I myself am about to explain, then I'll explain even further. But right now he says, this is my level of understanding. I'm afraid to talk deeper because it's, it's exceedingly deep and we have to understand that it's delicate and it's nuanced and we have to go slowly, slowly to understand what the Degel is going to be teaching us. And he says, he says, I heard from my grandfather, the Baal Shem Tov. Like we mentioned in previous weeks, the Baal Shem had a daughter, Adol, and Adol had two sons. Adol had the, the, the Degamach and Ephraim and her Baruch of Mezhbitz, the two grandchildren of the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh. Their sister was Fega, 
Fega Hanavia, she was called, Fega the prophetess, an unbelievable Balas Madrega, and her son was Rabbi Nachman. So these are Rabbi Nachman's uncles. Rabbi Nachman is a great grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, and the Dega Machin Ephraim, and Rabbi Baruch Mezbitzer, his brother, the Chinos of Chesed and Gvura, respectively, were the grandchildren of the Baal Shem Tov and the children of Adam. And he says, I heard from my grandfather, the Baal Shem Tov, ki chet, the word chet, which means sin. And like I've mentioned so many times in Shirv in the past, and we've learned together, that to sin doesn't mean something ugly, something dirty, something, something lowly. Of course, that, that, that's what it, that's what it the, the, the implication of the word chet, so to speak, conjures up images of lowliness and corporeality. And, but what does the word actually mean? What's the translation of the word chet? The translation of the word chet from various psukim and Tanakh, to be able to sling a, 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 an arrow or a, or, a, or a stone and a slingshot at a hair of yachti and not to chait. What, what does that word chait mean? Not to miss. The word chait means to miss. The word chait means that you step off of the allness, of the unity of living, of the yashras of life, of what you really want, of your connection to the tachlis amiti. And for a second, the ruach shtus, like the Gemara Saita tells us, enters into your mind, that spirit of folly, and it distracts you. That's a chait. Of course, that also means that a person gets dragged into the lower elements of his being, if it's lashon hara, if it's, if it's a staklis asuras, if it's eating something improper, if it's speaking about something, all these different things. But... What's actually happening at the core? What is, sits at the root of all of these negative behaviors? It's the concept of chait, which means that you simply miss. You simply walked off for a second. And the beauty of this, of understanding this, is that the same way that you stepped off, you can step back on. But the fact that you're acting right now in a way that's out of congruence with your ideals doesn't mean that you no longer have those ideals. Because the whole action that you're involved in can be, can be, can be termed and can be phrased and can be labeled and defined as chait, as a miss. This is not me. This is not what I'm doing. A person, even if he's a bal chait, right? A person who is a sinner, all the time a sinner, and that's what other people call him, and that's how he thinks to himself, but he has to realize that in that definition, he has to realize that he's defining only a secondary part of his being. He's not defining his essentiality. He is not what he's doing. He is a bal chait. He's a sinner. What does it mean, a sinner, a bal chait? It means he is one who is missing, consistently missing perhaps, but still that yashras, that inner straightness, that inner connection to the Tachlis Amiti is still there, is still accessible to him in the same way that he steps off, he could step back on. And that's the beauty and the, and the necessity of really understanding what it is, a chait, right, to sin. Says the Baal to ki chait, this word sin, is spelled ches, tes, aleph. Chait, ches, tes, aleph. With its seiri under the ches, a shva under the tes, chait. Now, fascinating thing with this word, sometimes you have in English also. There's something in English called silent letters, right? The word knife is spelled K-N-I-F-E. You don't say knife, right? The K is silent, knife. So over here also, there seems to be a silent letter in this word because theoretically, you could also say the word chait with only two letters, with the ches and the tes. That would also say chait. This aleph at the end is silent. It's imperceptible. It doesn't enter into the pronunciation of the word chait. You don't hear it. Can't identify it unless you were reading it. But a person says the word chet, you have no idea that there's an aleph there. That means that the aleph and what it represents is hidden. Says the Baal Shem Tov a famous Torah, that that aleph is hinting in the word chet, which means sin, is hinting to alufo shel olam. The word aleph is a letter, but it could also mean aluf, which means a chief, a master, aluf esav, aluf teiman, right? All of the different chiefs and in the in chieftains, right? That, that are brought in the Torah and the descendants of esav and that family. But the word aluf means a chief. And so alufo shel olam is the master of the world. HaKadosh Baruch. And the aleph, that hidden aleph in the word chet is referring to the master of the world who's present at the time of sin. I understand why this is a dangerous Torah and a dangerous idea and needs to be understood in the larger context of what the Baal Shem Tov was trying to teach and what the tzaddikim, how they lived and what they meant. And we're going to discuss. Pasuk and Mishlei, that many times the Svarim use when they're talking about teachings of previous generations, that the words of the Chacham, the words of the wise man, Chaim, they're dripping with grace. Upeirusha, what it means... Is kia aleph he ain't a niglis for ain't a karis but mivta like we just expressed. The aleph is not expressed. The aleph is not perceptible. It doesn't come to expression when a person articulates the word chait. The hiba achren it's all the way at the end. 
He says the Baal didn't say this to my knowledge, but the, the word Tame theoretically also has the same thing, right? Tame also. You could just have the ta, the test rather, and the Mem, a Tseri under the Mem. You could say Tame impure. The Aleph at the end of the word Tame is hidden. It's imperceptible. Rahman al Gam came an Aleph who moved Labachrena, so to speak, it's swallowed up by the Mem. Tame. Swallowed up by the Tseri. So what does this mean? He says when a person goes ahead and commits a sin, like we learned, in that moment you are pulled astray from what you really are, who you really are, what you really want, what life is all about, and the things that you do know at better moments. But at that time, all of the things that are the clearest to you at times of elevation are the least known bits of information in your life. Everything becomes forgotten from you, from me. Everything becomes forgotten in that moment. The Ruach Shus enters and knocks us completely, completely off, chait, to miss, to step off the path. Everything is forgotten. Like we mentioned the Gemara, that a person is only sinning, a person is only stepping off the path if a spirit of folly is entering his mind and entering his consciousness and leading him astray. So a person thinks at that moment of ignorance, at that moment when a person is completely cut off from the awareness of a Kaddish Baruch, when a person is in a constricted consciousness of passion and of desire and of dam, Shabbat Allah Smali in the lave, that a person is on fire with a lowly fire, with a lowly desire and a, and a, and a, and a taiva to do something that's negative Ratz and Hashem, at that moment the person thinks, the premise of a person stepping off the path is that for a second, in that moment when a person's clarity on what he's doing in this world flickers for a second, all of a sudden he begins to doubt whether our Kaddish Baruch Hu really cares about his actions, whether our Kaddish Baruch Hu is really looking at the world, whether God is present in his in his life, because the Degel says if a person would know umamin and believe bazesha neged Hashem come afalam, and a person would have clarity at a time of the Eight Sahara that literally God is present and God is watching and God is is caring and God has concern for our actions and our actions matter and they affect the whole world down here. The heavens above and the earth below. If a person knew this, says the says the Degel, so a person would never act in such a way. A person would realize that he. Being watched, it's shameful, it's embarrassing. If a person is caught, you know, doing something improper with, 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 with other people, it's embarrassing. Allah has come of a come of the master of the world, the creator of all being. What kind of shame we would have if we really did believe that God is real, that God is not just a concept, something we speak about, but He exists and we exist within Him. If we believed that at a time of chait, it would be impossible to act in such a way. It would be impossible to express. We wouldn't allow ourselves to expose ourselves in such a way. But the truth is, of course, that this conception that a Kaddish Baruch Hu left the world, that a Kaddish Baruch Hu doesn't care, that a Kaddish Baruch Hu is not watching, that our actions don't matter, of course it's Sheker Mukhlat, Sheker Gamor, it's an absolute, it's, a, it's, it's, it's absolute falsehood. Because the truth is, God is watching. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is watching all of the time. Because if it would be possible for the master of the world, so to speak, and if Kaddish Baruch Hu would, because it certainly is possible for God to just dry up the Ashkach on this person, that God wouldn't be looking at a human being, if that were possible, and we feel this way all the time, our Kaddish Baruch Hu doesn't care about me. God is not looking at me. Rabbi Nachman has Lashon is like that. She ain't a stock of little klal in Tarim and Ches and Tinyana, that famous lesson. Our Kaddish Baruch Hu is not looking at me. He's not helping me. He doesn't care about me. If that were actually true, there would be no me. There would be no you. We wouldn't be here. This that we're alive, this that we're breathing, this that we're functioning means that God is looking at us, that God is beaming to us life, hashkacha. We speak about this all the time, that God is consciously pumping me with, 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 with vitality and life force and the ability to be in this world. Who's giving you the ability to think that God doesn't care about you? God. Kaddish Baruch Hu. You wouldn't be able to think. You wouldn't be able to have anxiety over your past and the fear that God has, has disconnected and severed the connection from you. You wouldn't be able to have that thought if a Kaddish Baruch Hu wasn't intimately connected with you and intimately at stake in your existence and intimately filled with concern for you. The person would die. We wouldn't have the ability to do anything. Of course, without a question, a Kaddish Baruch Hu is present at that time. 
when we come to this realization afterwards, but in the moment, it's not clear to us. Even though HaKadosh Baruch Hu is present with us, why don't we perceive it? Why in that moment is, like we said, the least known bit of information is because God is very, very hidden in that place. He's there. Make no mistake about it. He's there. He's giving us the ability to do the chet in the first place, which, of course, opens up a, a, a Pandora's box, so to speak. In a certain way, it could be used positively at the right time by the right tzaddikim to be able to have bima lamet schus on Klai And the Kedusha Slevi does this in his drushim, the Rosh Hashanah. The Kedusha Slevi looks up at a Kaddish Baruch Hu proverbially through his, through his writing, and he says, Master of the world, what are you getting angry at Klai that they sinned? You gave them the ability to sin. And the truth is that it's really rooted in the Gemara and Brachas. The Gemara Brachas has a Mali Shlesha Mikrais, that there weren't three Psukim that speak about similar things, about God giving Klai Yisrael the ability, God leading us astray. Nismaititu Ragleim Shal Yisrael. Klai Yisrael's feet would, would, would shudder. We would have nothing to say for ourselves when we come up in front of the heavenly court. This is a Limut You have to know how to use it in a healthy way. Chas Hashal, not to be Moraheter on yourself. That, okay, you know, God is giving me the ability. It's not really me. We have free choice. That's not a question. Retrospectively, from, a, from that perspective, in a certain moichin, in a certain consciousness, it can be used to, uh, you know, to, to, to be Malam Tzchus. But Akalpanim, the truth is that God is there. God is giving us the ability to do the chait. God's energy is coursing through our veins, those very same veins that are bursting with a blood that seems to be filled with taiva and desire that's negative Ratzon Hashem, like the term of the verse says right in the beginning. Same thing, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving us the ability that's one of the biggest, biggest chasadim. And why the Malachim call HaKadosh Baruch Hu the Melech Elbon, right? The, the, the king who's embarrassed, the king who's full of, full, filled with shame because we shame him all the time. The Tanya says also, the Kutumarayim, Amarim, and the first chait, and the Sefer Shalbe, in him, that, 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 that Tanya says the same thing, that a person who sins because a Kaddish Baruch was present in the sin, it's like taking the face of the king, it's not nice to say, but this is what he says, and shoving it in a dirty toilet. That's mamash what it is, he says. The king's Tselem Elohim is upon you, and a person is going ahead, and I'm going ahead, and we're going ahead all the time, and we make mistakes, and we're falling into dirty places, you're bringing the Tselem Elohim with you into that place. It's Nair Nairoyos, it's a Pachat, to think of that. That the Shekhinah is with us, trapped in exile in Gullus, but she's there. That Kodesh Baruch's presence is there. And it comes with us wherever we go. Why don't we perceive it? Because it's hidden. It's very, very, very hidden. <laughs> says the Degel, there are other interpretations also of this teaching that we find by the other tzaddikim. But the Degel says this is what the Vashem Tev meant that when the letter Aleph is in the word Chait and that relates to the master of the world, it means that's the aspect in which HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with a Jew even in the time of Chait. That's the aspect in which HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving the person life, in which the person has the ability to return to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Like Rabbi Nachman says, wherever you are, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a arts kavoyday, Malaychala arts is kavoyday, even in the lowest depths of dirt, the master of the world is there. And you could, in that place, you could find him and return to him. There's no place that he's missing. Rabbi Nachman speaks very much about the concept of connecting oneself to emes, to sincerity, and to, and to true brokenness. Because if a person connects to emes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu's seal is emes. That's the Sophie Tevis of Bereshis, Bara Elohim, the last three letters, and also Bara uh, um, Bar Elohim S, the last three letters of those words spell MS. And, and Chazal say that's the Chosam, that's the seal, that's the insignia. Hashem was here, you know, it's MS, Hashem Lekechem MS, that's a Kaddish Baruch Hu's stamp. And Rabbi Nachman says that just like, he hints this, doesn't say it outright, but this is what he means. I, 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 has daiti, that just like the word emes goes rosh toch sof, goes from the highest heights, from the aleph to the mem, to the taf, the first letter of the aleph base, the middle letter of the aleph base, and then the top, the last letter of the aleph base, spanning all different madrigas, like we know from Rav Kuk's Reish Milin and other tzaddikim, that the aleph base represent different levels from aleph all the way, all the way down the Ma'ar the dalid, the, 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 the tough rather, the 400, it represents ra'ayin, it's gamacha ra'ayin, the 400 men of Esav, this lowly world, the tough all the way at the end, and as you proceed higher and higher to the Gimel, to the base, to the Aleph, Salufa Shalom, like we said, is the highest level in the world. And the, the word MS connects all, spans that entire spectrum from beginning all the way to the end, from the beginning of the Seder Stashos all the way to the end. So when a Jew will connect to MS on his level, then wherever you are, you connect to yourself to God. 
Wherever you are, you could be all the way, all the way at the bottom. So connect yourself to the tough of MS. Because that tough that's there, that's in your place on the lowest level, is God's seal. HaKadosh Baruch Hu spans all levels. We have the ability to connect ourselves to Him. That's the Aleph that's present in the time of Chayt, giving the person life, believing in the person that after the Chayt is finished, and a person comes back to his senses, and a person realizes that the Chayt wasn't the real me, it was a mistake, I stepped off, and I need to step back on. A person can then connect himself to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and recalibrate and refresh and start again and begin anew. Says the Degel, and here we come in for a landing. He says, When a person comes to a matziv, to a position of sin, When a person is acting, we were speaking before about lowly actions, about chet uh, and tuma and tame, but over here when a Jew is engaging like we began with, with tefillin and with mitzvahs, the mitzvah of sukkah, literally like we mentioned before, entering into the hovering and the surrounding, the shechinas, that's sachechas, which means to hover over the, the Jews that walk into it, the bina, that concept of the mother that surrounds, that embraces the child, mikvah is the same way also, you enter in like the Vilna Gon says, and Eretz Yisrael, a person is in the mitzvah, but all the mitzvahs are like that, like we mentioned, avir de ganeden, that spirit of paradise that surrounds the Jew that's engaged in a mitzvah, when a person is involved in a holy action, nikra b'china hazois b'china alif, this level of godliness that's giving life to the person is also called alif, alufa shalaylam, but it's connected to the concept of ani rishon. Not like the tough of the word MS that's all the way at the end, that's mechaya, that gives life to the lower realms and levels of existence. This is a very, very high aleph and it's connected to the Pasuk or the words of the Pasuk that say, Ani Rishon, says God, I am first. Oh, the next two words is Ani Achron, I am last, which we'll read about in, the min- in a second. And then the Pasuk says, And aside from me, there's no God. Aside from me or outside of me, there is nothing. There is nothing. When Bala die without me, Ainalakim, there's no power, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's no potency, there's no, no, nothing happening, there's no creation. Ani Rishan Ani Akran, I span all levels. I MS, Aleph, Mem, Tav, Rosh, Toch, So, from beginning to middle to end. Ani Rishan Ani Akran. So, the level of a Jew who's connected to the mitzvahs, he's connected to our Baruch Hu, but on the level of Ani Rishan. There's an Aleph there, but it's a very high Aleph. It's an Aleph, big, a big Aleph, not the Aleph Zeira of Ayikra, but the big, big Aleph. He's connected to HaKadosh Baruch on the level of Ani Rishon. And when a person is involved in a chayt, God is there, like we said. The Aleph is hidden in the word chayt. The Aleph is hidden in the word Tame. The, the word Emes, which is God's seal, spans from the Aleph to Mem all the way to Dav. God is there in that place, giving him the ability to fix, giving him the ability to return to him, to step back on the straight and narrow path of what a person knows he's supposed to be doing or she's supposed to be doing. But in that level, that's called Ani Achron. It's a very, very hidden level of godliness. And of course, that lower level of the tough that's all the way down in the lowly places and the dregs of existence and the lowliest corporeality and, 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 and the lowest, most physical levels of being yearns to connect to that new Rishon. Just like the lowliest Jew in a moment of Esaurus yearns to be connected to davening and to learning and to tzaddikim and to ruchnius, he just doesn't know how to start. But that same yearning is felt all the time by the godliness of that low level. And he yearns to jump up and to connect to its lover, to its beloved. That's all the way on the top, the tough of MS and the Aleph of MS. They yearn to get together because the tough is drawing from the Aleph. The lower levels always are drawing from the higher levels. And so the Ani Achron, that aspect in which our Baruch Hu is giving life to the lowliest realms of being yearns to connect to Ani Rishon. Because he says the higher levels, the Ani Rishon gives life to the Ani Achen, like we mentioned. And as you go in Yerida, any time that a person, so to speak, sinks down one level in spirituality, it's called Misa. Right? All the kings that are mentioned in, 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 in Sefer Bereshis, that are a reference to the different spiritual worlds, when, when, when they sunk from their level, it's called Vayamas, right? That's what the Zara Kaddish says. Anytime that, that, a, that, a, that a spiritual entity goes down a level, it's called Misa, even though it's still alive, but it's called death. 
on that level. When a person lifts up this low level of ani achrein to a higher level by doing a mitzvah or by returning from that avera or by holding back from doing a subsequent sin, doing tshuva on, on, on the past. I'm sorry, Through this, a person is going ahead and allowing his ani achron. The channels open, all the doors are open, and the shefa and the blessing and the power of the ani rishon is filtering down through the system to provide that ani achron full of life because it was dead before because it was on a low level, which, like we mentioned, is a concept of misa. But now that I'm giving it. Elevation. Now that I'm lifting it up, now that the Jew is returning from that place to the master of the world, this is called chiyas. This is called life. And in that moment, the godliness on the highest levels comes down to unify and to connect with the godliness on the lower levels. An amazing thing. And this, like we said, this is the concept of the Pasuk. Ani Rishon says God. I am first. That's the concept of godliness on a very high level. Ani Achrin. I am also the last. Umi Baladai Enalikim. Outside of me, there's no God. And this is the Indian. of allowing HaKadosh Baruch Hu's presence to, so to speak, fill all of being. The whole word Emes. Aleph, Mem, Tav, from the beginning all the way to the end. And this expresses the fact that God has not left the world. was looking with his open eyes on every detail that happens in the world and in all the worlds. And he's giving life to everything. Those high levels of potential of Kedusha, Ani Rishan is giving life all the way, all the way to all levels on the lowliest levels to Ani Achrin. And with this we finish. What do we say is, 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 the, is the definition or what, how do we express the levels is with the word Ani. Ani Rishon. I am HaKadosh Baruch who is first, so to speak, the higher level. The Ani Achram. And our whole tafkid is to go ahead and do mitzvahs. And by doing so, we lift up the lower levels of godliness that, that are filtering down into the lowliest levels of existence. I'm lifting them up to Ani Rishon, to that level. And by doing so, I'm giving them life. I'm enabling them to climb out of the rut of the death that they abide within. And I'm enabling them to connect to the highest levels. Says the Degel, this is Pshat in the Pasuk. These are the mitzvahs that a Jew should go ahead and do. And like we mentioned before, to enter in with all of their, with all of their being. To enter into that place. When a person is going ahead and a Jew is doing these mitzvahs and performing the mitzvahs properly, he is giving life with these mitzvahs to Ani Hashem. To the concept of Ani, to the concept of Ani Achron, to the concept of the lowly godliness, so to speak, not the lowly godliness, but the godliness that fills the lower levels and gives life to those lowly levels. The Chai Bahem, when a person is doing mitzvahs, he gives life to Ani Hashem, to that low level of Ani Achron. And through this, he brings about And then he finishes again another expression of how scared he was to even speak about this. And he says, May God forgive me if I made a mistake, the Uranian flies with Taraso, and let us see wonders in his holy Torah, Torah's MS, Li Ulazari to myself and to my grandchildren, which was of course came true. Ad Olam for all eternity. Amen. And uh, this is an amazing teaching to remember. When a person is in a in a matziv, in a in a place of chait, of, of 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 being wrapped up in this passion of sin, a person needs to remember, Kadosh Baruch who's with me. There's godliness here. If a person falls into a sin, then retrospectively turning around, he needs to remind himself there was godliness in that place. God is still with me. He hasn't forsaken me. He's giving me the ability to rise up and to grow and to change and to elevate through this and really to turn all the averus into mitzvahs by elevating. All of the godliness of Ani Achron to the level of Ani Rishon. And by doing so, a person is able to reveal and to express that That aside from a Gadosh Baruch Hu, there's no power, there's nothing. A Gadosh Baruch Hu fills everything. He's with us in every situation, giving us life, giving us strength. And we should be Zoha to realize it and to connect with the Be'ezer Hashem. I wish you, I hope that you're all doing well. And I wish you a wonderful, beautiful Shabbos.
Thank you so, so much for listening.